Assalamu alaikum ladies and welcome to our usual clubhouse room which we hold on Saturday evenings at 6 p.m. UK time um, and also we like to stream live via Facebook and this week we're also going to be on Zoom because some of you are having difficulties logging on to the app. So um, we had quite a bit of interest in uh, Yunani medicine and uh, just, just this this topic that we're going to be mentioning tonight. So we just thought we'd just give you all kind of a little taste our introduction because Waqaya is our expert in that, inshallah. So I'm just going to give you a mini introduction and then I'm going to hand it over to Waqaya. So Yunani medicine is also known as <clears throat> Yunani Tib. The name Yunani is derived from the Greek word Ionia, and it means having knowledge of the different states of the human body in health and illness, right? So how the body is when it's healthy and also how the body is when it's lacking in that health, right? So it's a tradition which combines Greek and Arab knowledge based on the principles of Bukrat. Uh, you may know him more famously by the name of Hippocrates and also the Roman physician Galen. Uh, so the Arabs and the Persians, they took this information and they transformed it into this elaborate medical system. And uh, the pioneers of these were like Arazi, Ibn Sina, Az-Zahrawi, and Ibn Nafis. Some of you may have heard of some of these names, right? Um, Yunani is widely practiced in South Asia and it combines traditional medical systems of the Chinese, um, the Egyptians, Indians, Iraqis, Persians, and Syrians. So it's really broad. Okay, so it combines all of these together and it comes under the umbrella of Yunani medicine. According to Yunani practitioners, the health of the body is dependent on keeping seven matters balanced, right? This is the whole kind of system. Okay, so there's number one, which is the Afghan. The arcan, which is the elements. Then number two, the mizaj, the temperament, which is what we're going to be looking at in a bit more detail today. Then you have number three, the akhlat, which is the bodily humors. Number four, the aza, which are the organs. Number five, the arwah, which is known as the vital spirit. Number six, the kuwa, which is the faculties or the strength. And lastly, the afal, which is which are the functions. Okay, so like I said, we're going to be make, focusing mainly on temperament today, but other elements may be mentioned because they do kind of tie in together. So the four main essential mizaj that they have, okay, the temperaments, there's four main ones, which is hot, cold, moist, and dry. And then they kind of combine together. So you might have like a hot and moist person and a cold and dry person, etc. right? So uh, the way that you kind of balance these different um, uh, temperaments varies, okay? And they usually use plants, minerals, and animals, okay? So changes in the na natural temperament of a person can cause the health of that individual to suffer. So it's a pivotal role in Yunani medicine, the, the mizaj, the temperament, right? And it helps to um, characterize an individual's normal state. And when they mean normal state, they actually look at the physical, the mental, and the social, and the nature of dis, dis ease that can occur in this person. And something that, that really fascinated me in terms of United Medicine is something that I've been studying myself uh, in nutrition recently and uh, in functional medicine. And they have a principle called bio-individuality. Now, this approach is, again, a holistic approach, just like United Medicine. And it looks at adopting a lifestyle and, and nutrition that is very specific to an individual, to your body, to what it needs, right? Biochemical individuality also looks at things like your own ancestry, okay, genetically where you're from. So, for example, if your ancestors thrived on a certain on certain food groups, then it's likely that you would too. Uh, the example that um, I can give you here would be like the Chinese or Japanese, right? So their diet, 
right now would be very high in fish, rice, sea vegetables. And if that's also in your ancestry, then it's likely that you would do well on those too. And it also may mean that you lack the enzyme for digesting dairy efficiently, which is quite common uh, amongst them. So it's just amazing to think that, you know, all those elements could play a role in how we need to nurture ourselves. Um, and um, so that's the thing that kind of clicked with me whenever I heard things mentioned in terms of temperament, in terms of like hot foods and cold foods. And so this is why I hope this brief introduction into United Medicine will, will really open up a whole new way of you looking at um, how you nourish yourselves and, and your families. Um, absolutely fascinating topic. So we're going to get back to Yunani and take a deep dive with Ruqayya. Assalamu alaikum Ruqayya, good to have you here this evening. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you for that brilliant introduction, Faria. That was really good. Um, and um, I learned, I learned you, you kind of helped me get, get into the groove. So thank you very much. <laughs> Um, okay, so Yunani Medicine. Um, first, let me introduce myself. My name is Ruqayya. Um, I run the Serenity Clinic based in London, and I train in nutritional therapy, and as well as Yunani Medicine, which is our topic today. So I'm going to try and go into it um, as deep as possible, and there will be some um, elements or some aspects that we might have to revisit for another date. Um, so if I just start with Yunani Medicine, what is Yunani Medicine? So Farah gave us a brilliant um, brief introduction and um, Yuanna medicine is um, from the alternative and um, complementary medicines that we know of, um, but Yuanna medicine is quite unique um, because Yuanna medicine focuses on balance. We try to balance the natural equi equilibrium um, of an individual. Um, and in order to understand and to know um, what it means to balance an individual's um, equilibrium, we need to understand their temperament. Um, and so with the United Medicine, we believe that each individual has a unique temperament and a unique constitution. Um, and once this balance um, becomes off or once the person is imbalanced, so their mizaj or their temperament changes, then that's where illnesses um, occur. Um, so, unanimous medicine is based on achieving optimal physical, mental, and spiritual being. So, we don't focus on one aspect of, or one part of the individual. So, if you were to have um, kidney pains, we won't just focus on the kidneys. We will focus on the individual as a whole, and we will have. We try to um, attain the bigger picture. And so do a lot of other alternative medicine therapies as well. Um, so with United Medicine, it focuses on the maintenance of um, six essential factors. Um, and this is also called umuru tabi'iya or, or umuru tabi'iya. Um, and this refers to the six factors. And with these six factors, if they are in balance, so if the individual is in balance with these six factors and um, that suit a balance that complements them, um, then we know that this person is in, will be in balance. However, when the individual or the person um, starts to um, change some of these factors um, and they become more lax in some of these factors and, and they change their habits, and whether it's food or whether it's sleep then we know that this causes an imbalance factors the six factors are one either air and the environment two wakefulness and sleep three movement and rest four food and drink five emotional or mental activity three um, and sorry six retention and elimination so with these six factors, they can cause, they can either complement your person's constitution or they can cause havoc on the person's constitution. Um, and we're going to go into that a bit deeply um, later on. So um, what is mizaj or what's the temperament that we keep referring to? Um, and 
with a mizad or temperament, this refers to one's natural a physiological profile, psychological profile, um, and where the temperament derive from, and what does it what, what does it mean? So these temperaments derive from the belief that there are four elements that comprise comprise um, within the body, and this is earth, water, air, and fire. And each of the qualities, what does earth possess? It has a cold and a dry quality. Water, it's cold and moist. Air, it's hot and moist. Fire, it's hot and dry. And when these elements interact and admixture, they result in four biological fluids. And these are referred to within Yunani Tib as humors. These yellow bile, phlegm, and black bile. So blood. Blood is hot and moist. Yellow bile, it's hot and dry. Phlegm is cold and moist. Black bile is cold and dry. And every individual possesses one dominant temperament so they may have more blood which is a hot or moist temperament or they might have more yellow bile more phlegm or more black bile and when these four humors are in the right balance or at proportion within the body then we have a healthy thriving bodily environment and we need to understand that we all have some elements of these um of all all of these humors um, and um each individual, however, has more of one. So you, you may have more of a blood um, humour um, and I may have more of a yellow bar humour, but we all possess them in different proportions. So, um, yeah, so humours. So we spoke about blood, yellow bar, phlegm and black bar. So within um, the, I have a psych, a uh, student, um, one of my friends who's in psychology, and they also have something similar. Um, and they, the, the, the four names that they deal with is sanguine, cleric, phlegmatic, and monoconic. And we also refer to these um, uh, cold, like with these actual humans. So a blood individual, a person who has more blood, will be considered sanguine. So they have a more air. And a person who is a yellow bar, there will be a cleric. A person who is um, who possesses more phlegm, who has a, who's a phlegmatic in nature, phlegmatic in, in the nature, would be um, yeah, a phlegmatic individual. And a person who has more back, black bile would be um, referred to as a melancholic um, individual. So, what does it mean, and how do we recognise um, each? Um, temperament, and um, how can we recognise it from ourselves? How can we look at ourselves and say, hey? I think this is my temperament and I'm going to eat and live accordingly to balance my temperament. So they have different qualities and different signs. And if I was to see a client, I would observe these signs within the individual in order to find out what this person's temperament is. And in most cases, when clients come to me, they would come with an obvious um, health issue. So they, want, they wouldn't really come unless um, they wanted an issue that um, they would like me to help them with so um so most in most cases clients that are seen are already in balance and it's our job to figure out what 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 do what, what did they deviate from what was their original um, temperament and um, so at first these are the four characteristics and the qualities that each temperament possesses so sanguine so this is the blood temperament what is the blood temperament? Um, what are the qualities of the blood a person with a blood temperament? So this person is of a hot or moist nature. So they have abundance of blood, yeah? Um, they are quite tall, medium to tall, generally. Um, they have strong bone, strong bone structure. And most of them are quite muscular, yeah? They're quite muscular, athletic, and strong. Um, and sometimes they may they may not be as muscular, but they have more meat on them. So they're not, I wouldn't say overweight, but they have, they have some weight. 
you know, their, their joints are quite well covered um, and they've got broad chest. Um, they're described as having well formed joints. And in general, they have a quite reddish complexion. So they have an undertone of red type of undertone. So no matter what skin color, what race you are, we all have undertones. Undertones. So some might, some person, a person may be of a darker skin ethnic background, like a black person or um, an Asian. And even though they're dark, they have an undertone that's that's different. So with me, I'm an East African, and um, I'm I consider myself um, a black African um, woman, um, but I have an undertone, and I have like a yellowish tint to my skin color. So we need to um, we we look deep. In we look in their skin we look at their face and we, we try to look for the undertone of the skin and with a sanguine individual they're generally red and some of them they have um rosy cheeks quite rosy and um and this is something that they possess um in general they generally have rosiness you know we do have rosiness when we're shy and we blush but this is a person who's of a blood temperament or a hot or moist temperament they would generally have no, they're known to to possess this reddish undertone a reddish complexion. Um, their their um, pulse, so when we read their pulse, it's generally rapid pulse, and they generally have um, prominent prominent veins and um, full veins. You know, they've got a lot of moisture and they've got a lot of heat, you know, they've got full, full veins. Um, they generally have dark hair, you know, dark and generally straighter hair, not necessarily straight, dead straight, but straighter hair. And it's thick, thick black, um, or thick, dark, straight hair. Um, they also have some, some, some sort of heaviness in their body, you know? And a person of a moist temperament generally is, has heaviness with them and they generally tend to get um, headaches um, if they're in balance. And they, they tend to have um, heaviness in the temples and the back of the eyes um, and so on and so forth. So um, this heaviness comes from the moisture and the abundance of blood. Um, they generally have, um, with their hab habitual um, habitual aspects, they generally um, sleep well. They generally enjoy good quality sleep, um, and that's a lot to do with the moisture that they they have. Um, but it's not too much, so they don't they don't um, enjoy too much sleep. But they do tend to have um, good quality sleep. They love their sleep. Um, and so, what are the diseases associated? with an excess of that temperament. So if a person of a sanguine temperament, so this is a blood temperament, hot and moist. If a person of a blood temperament was to have an excess um, within the temperament and they become imbalanced, then they have, they, they start to develop um, different types of um, conditions or symptoms and they may get a lot of headaches. So a person with a sanguine temperament tends to have a lot of headaches heaviness on the eye, um, eye heavy, heavy headaches, heavy, heavy, heaviness on the back of their, their eyes, the temples. Um, they generally may, may get high blood pressure. And this is when it's ex of excess. So they, might, they may get um, high blood pressure. They may have frequent fevers, you know, because of the heat. And if the heat or the moisture because of, becomes of excess, then this will cause um, quite, um, a lot of fevers. Um, they may also develop um, bloody um, diarrhea. Um, they may get boils in the skin and infl inflammatory issues within the skin. Um, they may um, they may get nosebleeds um, because of the excess blood and the blood's trying to find its way out. And some of them also tend to have um, heavy periods. And this is when the blood is of excess. So when the hot and moist temperament becomes too much and, and it becomes of imbalance. And um, so these are the diseases associated with an excess of blood. Um, and um, um, yeah, so this is a hot and moist temperament. So now we're gonna move on to the yellow bile, a person who's of a cleric temperament, and this is yellow bile. Um, so this is associated with the element fire. And we know that fire has a hot and dry um, quality. So a person who is of a cleric temperament, they tend to be um, hot and dry. Um, and this mean, and their 
physical um, um, physical um, appearance tends to be medium of, and in terms of the stature, so medium stature. They tend to have a hairy body. So they tend to, if it's a male, they tend to have a hairy chest. Uh, if it's a, a female, they may have a lot of hair as well, um, especially on the hair and the areas that females tend to um, grow hair. They tend to be of a thin, um, thin weight, so they're quite slim. So they're either um, they're not too too slim because that's associated with another, with another temperament, another dry temperament. But a hot and dry person would be still be to the slim side, slim slash thin side. So they don't have that much fat. Um, they generally have an undertone, so their undertone is generally yellowish, a yellowish undertone, um, and. Um, also, I didn't mention earlier, but there are temperaments that are associated with different different ethnic backgrounds. So, a person from Southeast Asia, for example, and they generally may be of one temperament, but they definitely vary. And it doesn't mean that because you're from one ethnic background or one country, you're going to have the same temperament. However, people from the same temperament, I'm sorry, from the same country or from the same ethnic background, tend to have similar temperaments or predominant temperament, um, and we see that a lot of um, Southeast Asians um, may have, for example, um, a hot and dry temperament, so a cleric temperament. And so some people of um, East Africa as well, like Somalia, for example, they tend to have like, more of a dry temperament, so either hot and dry or cold and dry, um, but they do vary within each um, individual. So um, yes, so the person of a hot and dry temperament, they have a yellowish undertone or yellowish complexion. Um, they tend to have thick curly hair. Um, so it's different. So it's less straight um, than hot and moist person. The hot and dry person would have more waves and more curl. With Generally, yeah. Um, can you hear me, Faria? Yes, I can hear you, Rukhaya. Thank you very much. Sorry, I'm just checking. Yeah. Um, yes, yeah, so a person of a hot dry temperament will, always, will also have, um, may also have um, prominent veins. However, it's, it may, may not be as prominent as a hot or moist person because the person of a hot and dry temperament, they have, they have a dry constitution. So they don't have that much, they don't have as much blood or as much moisture as the hot or moist. So they would have prominent veins, but not as much. And then when we're taking a pulse, they tend to have a um, narrow pulse, whereas the blood temperament, the sanguine individual, will have a wide temper and wide um, pulse. Um, they tend to um, have a strong and rapid pulse as well, pumping, pumping of energy, uh, mashallah. Um, and um, they tend to they tend to pass fiery urine because they have a lot of a lot of heat, um, and they generally are light sleepers it affects them they don't feel well for that day and i'm um, personally experience i've experienced that i try to um get by a difficult time in my life and i try to you know sleep um seven eight hours straight like my other family members do and i couldn't do that <laughs> i woke up feeling absolutely knackered um i felt very unwell that day um, and each time i do that um i i i, I don't have a good day I'll get headaches um, and I just feel groggy um, and unwell. Um, so I learned from my mistake and too much sleep is bad for me. So um, yeah, um, they, they sleep generally six hours. They may just do with six, five, some of them even five hours, they may just do with five to six hours. So depending on the, on the individual, of course. They generally have a good appetite. Um, they eat, um, they, they get hungry and, and they generally enjoy their food um in terms of characteristics now they're quite they they get angered easily so they they have a temper and this is very much associated with something that i used to hear from my culture like culturally i would be told you know this person um is hot-blooded you know they're, they're hot you know they get angry be careful you know and um you know coincidentally this is something associated with the united medicine a person who is um fiery and gets angry quite quickly Thick and it's associated with a hot and dry temperament. Um, so they do have heat, and this the old folks' tale is true. Um, and so, yeah, the person does have a lot of heat, it's associated with a hot and dry temperament. Um, and 
or sorry, a person who gets angered quite easily is associated with a hot and dry temperament. Um, and they're quite, um, you know they're quite revengeful they don't they don't forgive easily you know they remember what you do you know they remember that they if they have an issue with a person it, they, they remember you know they don't they don't forgive easily you know um, and um, they hold it quite close to them um, and whereas the person of a hot and moist temperament and I forgot to mention forgive me um, I forgot to mention of the a blood temperament may get angry quickly but they may also forgive quickly. So they may get angry and heated and they may say, you know, let's let bygones be bygones. It's okay, you know? And a hot and moist temperament, I'm gonna go back to the blood um, girls. I'm sorry about that. I'm gonna go back to the blood. The blood, the person with a blood temperament also um, is quite easygoing, friendly, people's person, very outgoing, enjoys large um, gatherings, large events, um, and just gets in there with the people. So very outgoing, very friendly, um, very easy to get along with um, and they they have heat so they make it they do get angry but they also let it go they let so eat, anger comes and goes with them whereas the hot and dry temperament um, it's really hard to let go of an anger the the anger or a grudge um, and they tend to remember um, you know they, they tend they, they tend to remember um, and don't um, they, they don't let go they don't let the anger go easily um, but they're also quite um, um, zealous and, and energetic and the, they are very, very, very much um, leaders. So a cleric individual, a hot and dry individual, a leader. They like to take lead. They don't like working for other people. They like to be their own boss. Um, and it, it is said that a lot of leaders of, in the world, so a lot of like presidents or leaders of, you know, businesses and um, in general, um, tend to be a person, people who have cleric in them. So they may necessarily not be a 100% cleric, but they have aspects of, um, of a hot and dry temperament of a, of a cleric in them. Or they are clerics, outright clerics. Um, and um, it's said that people around the world, leaders, leaders, leaders around the world, um, tend to um, be of a cleric temperament. Um, and yeah, so yeah, so this is a hot and dry temperament. So now we're going to move on to a phlegmatic individual. So a person of a cold and moist temperament. And so if we look at their um, appearance, outward appearance, then they tend to be um, slightly overweight and sometimes obese. Um, they tend to have flaccidity um, within the body. So um, very loose, very loose fats and loose, um, loose uh, maybe some... Um, um, what do we call that? We call it um, flab, you know, quite flabby. Um, and when you touch their skin, they're quite soft and moist. So your skin may be soft, moist, and quite cool. Um, and whereas the other temperaments, the hot and dry and hot and moist, when you touch them, they feel hot. Whereas a cold and moist temperament, so a phlegmatic, phlegmatic individual, may be um, quite cool, cool like water, skin soft. You know, when you poke the skin, it just flows like flows like jelly you know very soft and um and smooth and um, they tend to have flat chests um they tend to have a whitish complexion a whitish undertone within their skin and um, so a pale kind of color and as i said earlier um these complexions and these associations are not just um talking about we're not we're not referring to the actual skin color or the race of the individual we're talking about the undertone of the individual and a person of a black um, race, a person who's a black individual may still have undertones like pale or red or yellow and so on and so forth. So um, keep that in mind when you're um, trying to assess yourself or others. Um, yeah, so they have a pale complexion or undertone. They tend to have th thin and straight hair and they tend to have brown or light streaks within the hair. And I have a friend actually who um, is a phlegmatic and um, before I even saw her hair, I said, you know, um, phlegmatic, straight, you know? And um, when I saw her hair and everything, and she was just like, you know, I think you're right. Everything you did say, I do have. And she did have very, very thin hair, not much, um, not, yeah, not much volume at all, very thin and was very straight. And, it, and the straightness of the hair tends to be associated with moisture. So the moist the person, the straighter the hair will be. Um, and the dry the person, the curlier the hair would be. Okay, so um, let's move on to um, 
other um, appearance, um, appearances, appearances um, associated with a phlegmatic person. So they may, they, they have non-prominent veins. So it's really hard to find the veins. Um, it's quite deep when you take a pulse, you need to look deep to find that, that pulse. Um, and so they have a deep pulse and they have a soft and slow pulse as well. They tend to walk and their general, um, uh, they, they, they've got a lax way of, um, of walking or movement. They're quite slow and they're quite sluggish in their movement. They have um, a sluggish memory as well. They tend to forget easily. They have a um, poor um, retention, memories retention. Um, and they tend to just have slow reactions as well. So um, they don't, they're not quick, quick with it. So they, they may be smart, they may be intelligent, but they're not quick. Um, in their reactions um, and um, they, they tend to have a heaviness within their body as I mentioned and a lot of them say you know when they wake up in the morning they're so heavy they feel very heavy um, and um, this is to do with the moisture so the, the, the blood temperament sanguine individual and the phlegmatic individual they both have moisture so they both have similar um, attributes when it comes to the moist qualities um, so what are the diseases associated with um, a phlegmatic. So a phlegmatic individual uh, may have um, common colds. So if they're imbalanced or if they have excess temperament, to excess phlegmatic temperament or excess moisture and coldness, then they tend to get common colds quite often, running nose, uh, mucusy cough, um, hoarseness of the voice. They may develop pneumonia, worst case scenario, pneumonia, um, throat, um, throat pain, um, um, they may they may get nerve pain as well because of the cold and the catarrh. Um, they may um, develop um, you know um, fluids sort of um, tears, excess like fluid from the eyes, um, excess um, fluid from the nose, and they um, and um, if there's too much mucus, then they may develop um, epilepsy. And this is something that um, I like. I um, have a goes close to heart because I remember that um, my sister had epilepsy and she suffered from it for a while and um, she had to go through um, she had to go through they actually removed mucus from her from her spine um, and um, this is you know this is associated um, with neurotic medicine as an excess mu uh, mucus or excess phlegm within the body um, and as we see in uh, people with epilepsy they may um, have to have um, this excess mucus removed from through their spine. So this is, this actually, um, you know, correlate to each other. Um, I, I just, Mahmoud Fari, I forgot to mention diseases associated with excess hot and dry temperament. So the excess cleric temperament. Um, and um, so diseases associated with that temperament, if you've got too much heat and too much dryness, then you may develop um, fevers as well because of the excess heat. You may also develop um, excess um, ulcers, sorry. Um, you may develop, you may get weakness because of the dry, the dryness in it within your body. So if you become too dry, um, and that's the problem with the hot and dry individual, is um, when they become unwell, they tend to become weak. And um, this weakness comes from the dryness, um, the drying of the body, the drying with, within, um, the drying of the um, fluid in the body. So we know that when you get to old age, um, the fluids, especially the joints, the fluids that um, duplicate the joints become, become um, less. And this is associated with, associated with dryness. Um, and um, when the hot and dry person becomes, becomes imbalanced, they tend to have these symptoms, dry bone, dry and joint, and the bones ache and weakness of the muscles. Um, they also tend to get vertical, um, jaundice, any other liver inflammatory um, issue, conjunctivitis, um, and loose bowel movements. And so these are um, just some of the um, diseases associated with an excess of hot and dry temperament. Okay, um, I'm going to move on to the melancholic temperament. And this is black bile. Um, so it's a black but excess. And this is a person who's um, of a black bile um, temperament. And this person is generally of a cold and dry quality. So they, they have cold and dry um, inclinations within their constitution. Um, and this person's quite lean, 
they they're quite thin um, and sometimes they can look emaciated so quite skinny and you know unwell um, and this is generally um, their build and their, their body type and um, so as I said earlier that a hot and dry temperament um, is also thin but the cold and dry temperament the cold and dry individual will be thinner so they will be skinnier or slimmer than the hot and dry temperament. Um, and cold and dry individuals, so the melancholic individual, they tend to be um, they tend to be the skinniest of all temperaments. Um, they have a narrow chest and they generally have dry skin and rough and skin. And um, sometimes um, people from um, sub-Saharan Africa or, um, or Southeast Asia or people of a darker um, skin color, generally when we come to countries um, um, like um, the West, so Europe and America, etc., cetera, um, we tend to develop dry skin. And that is definitely to do, that's a different type of dry skin. So that's something that we may, um, that has occurred due to um, the change in environment, um, but it may not be necessarily your natural temperament. So for example, when I go back home to my country of origin, my dry skin goes away. Um, and when I'm here, um, which is most of my uh, most of my life, I'm, I've got dry skin, road dry skin. So um, it, it varies, but the person who is of an iconic temperament generally has dry skin and they generally have rough skin. Um, they also um, have um, dark um, dark hair, um, and they generally have a lot of hair. So they have they've got abundance of hair. They may have full hair on them, very um, curly. Remember the dryness associated with curly, with, with more wavy and curliness. Um, they generally have a dull complexion or dark complexion. So as I said earlier, this is not associated with any race. Um, but rather the undertone or the, the hole that you get with the skin. You know, when you look at someone there, you either get paleness. You know, when a person's anemic or a person loses a lot of blood, they, they get this paleness, isn't it? Yeah. So we're talking about darkness, you know, dullness within the, within the face or the complexion. Yeah. Um, and when we take their pulse, they don't really have a narrow, slow, depressed, low pulse. They have an irregular appetite, so they don't really eat um, at regular times. Their hunger's quite, um, you know, they, might, they may get false hunger and um, on and off um, type of hunger. They may not eat much as well. Um, they suffer from irregular sleep. Um, so um, they, they generally have interrupted sleep. Um, they, also may, um, they also may suffer from insomnia here and there as well. Um, and um, they're generally quite reserved, quite quiet, mysterious, shy, um, and sometimes they could be awkward, you know, they may not be comfortable around a lot of people, you know, um, and they um, may come off as very shy and timid. Um, they generally have good memory. So they generally have good, good memory. They're quite analytical. They're quite um, they're, they're hard workers. They like to just get on with their work, you know, make be good at numbers as well. Um, and um, um, yeah, um, that's, so that's the characteristics of a cold and dry person. A melancholic person is associated with um, um, melancholy. So they may um, suffer from, um, you know, sort of from depression or anxiety, or they may be nervous, you know, excess nerves, you know, um, they may be, um, they might not be as, um, you know, confident, you know, quite shy and quite timid, and they may not be comfortable enough to express themselves. Um, and this is something that I've seen in, within practice, you know, within team clients. Um, and, um, you know, um, they're just generally just really reserved and, and, and quiet and shy people. Um, what happens when a person of a melancholic temperament becomes imbalanced? Um, so they, if they have excess um, um, of black bile, um, they may have symptoms of the following. So they may get common colds, just like the phlegmatic individual because they're both cold temperaments. So they may get common colds and they may get depression and anxiety, especially um, when they are um, suffering from um, excess of dryness and coldness. You know, um, this can be to depression, anxiety, um, um, they may become irritable and um, they may become um, they may get irritation of the eyes. So they might itch their eye, a red eye. And um, they may get constipation if they're too dry. And um, they may have increased ur urination. And we know that a person who's nervous and anxious um, urinates a lot. 
So you can see the association with increased urination of an imbalance um, during uh, increased urination of a person who's imbalance of um, black black um, black bile, and the and um, person who's nervous and tense and really tense and, um, and anxious. They may have insomnia if they're imbalanced. They may develop dry eczema. So um, obviously we know that. Um, and there's, there are two types so, of eczema. So some per, one person may develop a eczema that's, that comes with some sort of moisture or some sort of, um, some sort of pus, you know, um, and that's a moist eczema, eczema. And then there are those who have dry eczema. So the person of a cold and dry, um, cold and dry temperament, a melancholic person, may suffer from dry eczema, whereas the, um, a, hot, a moist person, for example, may suffer from a um, a a moist um, eczema that comes with some sort of pus or liquid. Um, so a melancholic person may um, suffer from splenic disorders if they're imbalanced um, and um, mental disturbances, illnesses. Um, so um, mental imbalance, they may um, develop, they may develop schizophrenia, bipolar disorders related to uh, mental um, the mental um, illness. Um, they also may develop um, they may suffer from severe labour pains if they are suffering from an excess of cold and dry temperament during their pregnancy. Um, yeah, um, and I forgot to mention about the cold and moist individual. Um, that person, the person who's cold and moist, in terms of their character, they're very, very easygoing. Um, it's like water, they're just cool, they're chilled and very cool. Um, and they don't get angry, get angered easily at all. Um, and they don't like commotion. Um, they like to stay away from commotion and stay away um, from arguments. And they, you know, they tend to be the peacemakers, you know, in the middle person when it comes to when, when the situations, heightened situations are. Um, so yeah, so that's the cold and moist individual. Um, um, yeah, Faria, um, I think I've covered most things today. Um, did I mention the six factors yet? MashaAllah, that was a wealth of information. Um, the six factors, just remind me, just, just mention yeah. them, what were they about, yeah. so then I can tell you if you mentioned them or not. Yeah, so the six factors. So um, speaking about um, food and drink, um, wait for yeah, you mentioned that they that they were elements. Yeah, yeah. So these factors, um, with the Yana medicine, um, the maintenance of these factors are very very crucial. Um, and when we deal with um, helping client, we really focus on trying to balance these six factors. And what does it mean to balance six, these six factors? So it is believed within Yunani medicine that wake um, that these six factors contribute to either helping your temperament and complementing your temperament or causing an imbalance. So for an example, food and drink, we need to eat um, in a way that suits our temperament. So if you're a person of a hot or moist temperament, um, you need to, um, it would help balance your temperament to have foods that are cooling because we don't want to increase your heat because that will cause an excess of, of blood an excess of heat and um, so we will if we if we um saw a client that was of a hot moist temperament and they came with um any diseases associated with a blood temperament then we would say eat cooling foods cucumber um foods like green leaf greens and we would say eat and um, have coriander you know, coriander is a cooling, um, cold and dry herb. So dry coriander is a cold and dry herb. Um, uh, fresh coriander is a cold um, and moist herb. So um, we would advise to eat accordingly. Um, in terms of um, wakefulness and sleep. So we know that wakefulness, wakefulness um, increases you in, um, in a dry, so it dries you. Whereas sleep increases you in cold and moisture. So a person who comes with comes with a hot and dry, um, hot and dry um, imbalance. So this person's too hot and too dry, and they're imbalanced, and they're coming with health issues associated with an imbalance, a cold and dry. I'm sorry, a hot and dry imbalanced temperament. Then we would say you need to sleep. You need to sleep because sleep increases in UV moisture. So you need to enjoy sleeping, and we know that. When a person is um, when a person is um, heated and they're angry, 
um, they, they, they have excess of heat. They need to lie down, they need to sit down, they need to have a nap to cool them down. Even as um, as Muslims, we know that um, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he used to um, sleep at a certain time of the day um, and that will rejuvenate him and benefit him. Um, and it certainly cools an individual down. Um, so sleep is a cooling and moistening habit. Whereas wakefulness um, increases you in heat, um, in heat and in dryness. Movement and rest similar to wakefulness and sleep and sleep and sleeping as well. So movement increases you in dryness and heat. If you move excess though, if we move too much, then that that can actually burn out the heat and make you become cool and cool you down. And so, but it definitely dries you. So movement is a drying um, habit, whereas rest is a moistening habit. Um, retention and elimination. So it's about retaining what you retain and what you eliminate. So we retain materials that our body needs and eliminating that which is of waste that we don't need. So if a person retains retains material, so let's say a person um, has um, constipation, they suffer from constipation, then they're, ret they're retaining matter. And when you re retain matter, it increases an individual in moisture, and then they may suffer from um, being sluggish, lazy, unmotivated, you know, they can't get up in the morning, you know, they have excess of matter. And most, the, the temperament that suffers the most from retaining is a phlegmatic. Um, they tend to retain a lot and they tend to, in general, when they're in balance, they tend to suffer from um, constipation. Um, and um, a per an elimination, a person who eliminates too much or, or excess, then that means that they, um, they it dries them out. So it's, let's say an individual had diarrhea, yeah? And we know that a person who suffers from chronic diarrhea generally tends to be tends to lose weight. They become thinner than they were before, yeah? Because you're losing, you're eliminating matter. And what does that do? That, increase, that makes you drier. So it dries out your temperament. So if you're from a hot and moist temperament and then you get unwell, you become imbalanced, something changes within you, um, whether it's to do with the six factors, um, you've been eliminating too much and you become dry and you change your temperament, become imbalanced and you start to become of a cleric. You become of a hot and dry temperament. Um, um, and yes, emotional activity as well. So this is one of the six factors. So emotional or mental activity. If a person is stressed, generally they, they are going through a difficult time and they stress and they overthink and overthink, that causes dryness, that dries you, overthinking, anxiety, stress, it dries an individual out. And I can speak from personal experience. Um, when I had my child, my first child, um, I suffered from postnatal depression um, and I lost a hell of a lot of weight. Um, I became colder and I became drier. Um, it started with um, excess heat um, and it led to um, excess dryness. So I became too hot, too hot, too hot. And eventually the heat dried me out. And I was overthinking, overstressed. I wasn't sleeping. Um, I, came, I, I went from having, loving my sleep and enjoying my sleep and sleeping well to not sleeping at all. So I went from um, whether I was hot or moist, hot or hot and dry, I went all the way to becoming a cold and dry individual I became a melancholic um, and overthinking stress depression can dry you out and that's why emotional activity has an, has an influence on your temperament a person who's generally happy so they, their emotions are quite positive uplifted vibrant they tend to become moist hot and moist and um, um, and we can we see that in individuals when they're happier and emotionally um, satisfied they tend to put away they tend to become more moist. They tend to um, look very happy, very balanced, very healthy. Um, and modern medicine really focuses on maintaining um, these six factors and um, really, um, really um, gaining um, habits that benefit you and your own individual temperament. Allahumma <laughs> barik. That was a huge chunk of information there. Um, uh, you know, people are going to be saying this, this is a masterclass in, in Unani medicine, not introduction. 
اللهم بارك لنا بوبي ديشي جيست تي بوب ذا ايس بيرج رايت رقيه Definitely, there's much more um, to go into depth with, but de- depth with, but unfortunately, time is on our side today. Um, but um, yes, I, I think I managed to um, get in there as much as I could today. Mashallah, amazing, amazing. So just just a couple of questions. Um, so if someone is say one particular temperament, and then you know, like you said that they 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 like you know they went from one temperament to another temperament, could that be a reason for them? To, to become ill or is it because they've become ill they've gone to that temperament mm-hmm. so definitely if an, if a person um, felt like they were on temperament when um, at one point in their life and then something's changed they could it could be due to um, different factors so um, we know that um, in different stages of our lives our temperament does change so it, there's a general principle and um, within the medicine and um, and which um which speaks about um the stages of a person's life so when we're young and um, we tend to be hot and moist when we're children babies infants are generally um hotter and moister moister than 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 um other people why because for growth we need heat and we need moisture and children are growing um, dramatically through those years, through those childhood years. So when you're younger, you tend to be hot and moist. And then when you reach adulthood, so maybe young adulthood, that's when your temperament starts to slowly, your, your actual innate temperament starts to slowly um, appear. Um, and But in general, the principle is um, teens up to, um, let's say, 30, 35, let's say, and this is just a rough number, I'm not sure of the exact number, um, they tend to be hot and dry. They tend to be go-getters, they tend to go chase their careers, they try to, you know, um, take charge of their life. And this is this an energy and this, you know, this, um, and, you know, um, uh, eagerness is associated with a hot and dry temperament. So as a child, you're hot and moist in order to grow, you know, rapid, rapid growth. And then you tend to, from teen to uni, uni, the university age or to adulthood, you tend to be hot and dry. And then later on an individual starts to become changed they may become cold and moist so like when they're matured around like let's say 30s 40s 50s maybe um more most probably about 30 40s up to 50 they may tend to become cold and moist because they tend to you know um um feel you know um established and comfortable with their life you know and they tend to chill out more and they tend to um they tend to um, rest more and they become more cold and moist and then later on in their life so elderly um, stage is associated with a cold and dry temperament so you, you can see the different stages of our life changes however if this person the question um the person who asked this question if they think that they've become unwell so something has to, they've had a negative um, change with their life and they believe it's associated um, with something that's occurred, whether it's um, childbirth, whether it's traumatic event, um, then that's when you can say, okay, this shift in temperament, this shift in my temperament has um, caused um, a, a problem, you know, and that's when it's a problem. But if it's, if she's saying I was um, hot and moist, I think I was hot and moist when I was 12 or 13, and then I became, now I'm 40, I'm, you know, cold and, um, cold and moist, then it could be that, you know, in life, we go through the stages. However, that doesn't mean that um, if our temperament has changed, then we need to accept it. No, we need to try and rebalance um, our temperament. So if this individual, the sister asking the question, wants, does believe that she was once temperament and has changed, that's a big possibility. That's definitely most um, uh, possible. And she needs to focus on going back to her original temperament in order to support her innate constitution. Okay, Zakla Khair. Um, and anyone who does want to reach out to Ruqayya, um, you know, get consultation, this kind of thing, she is available. Um, in her clinic uh, in North London. Um, if you go ahead and contact her, her Instagram handle is at the Seremedy Clinic. So, you know, go ahead and do that, inshallah, bid that I'll reach out. Um, and Ruqayya, is it, is it, you know, is it easy something, is it something that's quite easy in terms of diagnosing yourself, like to decide what kind of temperament you are? Um, so, 
we tend to have a bias because we know ourselves very well. Well, most of us, I'm sure we, we, know, us, we know ourselves and our habits and our personality. So you could do, yes, um, some, some could say it's easy to, to diagnose yourself, but um, it's better to, for an accurate, um, an accurate um, uh, assessment, it's better that um, another party um, assesses your temperament um, because they will take um, all of your, um, your, you know, the, your signs, symptoms, your, um, even your body language into consideration, and then they will come up with a, um, a correct um, assessment with, when it comes to your visage or your temperament. So Amazing. you could, I guess you could, um, you could, yeah, you may actually hit, 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 hit it on the nail, um, and, but it's said that, you know, getting another point of view is better. Is, is this something that you do in your clinic? Yes. So um, once I when I see a client, um, I we observe them. We observe their movements. We observe the way they speak. Even for a matter of even speaking, um, you know, when someone's speaking, the way they speak. So if they speak very fast, that's associated with a hot temperament. <laughs> so the way they speak and the way they move, if they continuously move in their leg, yeah, that's associated with a hot and dry temperament, you know, or hot or moist temperament even, um, uh, you know, keep continuing moving your leg, always has to move and, you know, these movements and these little things or someone who's just sitting and not moving at all, you know, they're sitting in the chair waiting patiently and not moving at all that could be associated with a cold and moist temperament. So we look at body language, we look at, you know, um, the, the outer attributes, and we also look at the symptoms of what the patient says and their story. You know, every, everyone comes with a story and we truly, these consultations that we take um, with, the, with, uh, with United Medicine, we truly try to understand the person from childhood up until, to, up until um, that moment. Um, and oh, gosh, and I don't know if I'd want to meet someone like you <laughs> in, in a gathering and you'd probably be sitting there like analysing people. Oh, yeah, I know. Uh, exactly it's, what you yeah, and you know what? When, when you see a client, they don't obviously know what we're doing. We don't, they don't know that we're uh, doing that. <laughs> so they just come. Uh, but, um, now well, I'm you giving you... This will the... now know that's what we're going to <laughs> So, you know, oh, that's amazing. I love my verdict. For sure. Yeah. Inshallah. Yeah, yeah, we definitely have to cover this again um, next week, inshallah. I'm definitely looking forward to just um, sitting down with Ruqayya and just looking at what different angle to take this, um, inshallah. But there's so much information. I think, you know, there's just little things like even what you were saying about sleep being cooling and moisting. And you've said like, yeah, you know, Rasulullah sallallahu would have the qaylul at the siesta and mm -hmm. at the hottest part of the day. You understand? Mm -hmm. So, like, that mm -hmm. was obviously cooling and moistening for their body. You know, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's Absolutely. been uh, eventful. Jazakallah khair. And um, don't take up any more of your time. It's, it's been, like, you know, an hour. And, you know, I'm sure you must be tired. Allahumma barik, you know. But, um, oh, yes, nice. so... Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Inshallah, we'll be back the same time next week, which is 6 p.m. UK time. Uh, live on Clubhouse, Facebook, and inshallah, Zoom. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh.